Okay, well, what I wanted to do here is do a brief little video about blueprints. I know a lot of people are afraid of blueprints, but they save you a lot of time and aggravation. And if you just take a little bit of time to do them, um, you can you can do quite well. And uh, troubleshooting will be a breeze. Anyways, this is a, a shot of the print that I've just done. And I'm sorry, it's probably a little bit hard to see when the video, but I can kind of pan around it. You can see where my main line comes in, my receptacle for my computer and monitor that gets fed off the control box, uh, the DR row board, sound logic breakout board, and then we get into uh, controllers, contactors, uh, the Jaguar Cub uh, uh, variable frequency drive, the circuit breakers and the bus, the cooling fans that are going to be used uh, or are being used, the power supply, how it's broken down into the circuits, the motors with the encoders and uh, different pinouts that go out from the uh, the, the gecko drives. Just realize as I'm doing this, I haven't done all the labeling. I, that sh those should say they are gecko drives and they're not on there, and, and that should say motor, and, and it's not on there either. There's my limit switches which go back in and, and the terminal strips. So when you're doing all this, you're saying, wow, how can I get that all so nice and neat? Well, not really. What happens is, is you start working from your connection diagram and you write it down. For instance, we'll scan over here briefly and we'll look here. There's the power supply, the fuses, the contactors, uh, 13 and 14. I'm not using the ANSI designations. For a contractor, that should be a 4, like 4A, 4B, or 4 1, 4. Timers are number 2. Interposing relays are number 3. Um, there's just not enough relays in here to follow ANSI code for, for uh a relay designation so we're not going to bother with it but if you take a look at this here we, this is the EPO string and where it starts and it comes from the control fuse works its way down to terminal block number four terminal block one TV one terminal 14 every time you see this symbol that's what it means now it's part of the EPO string and it's going to go down and it goes to the EPO button mounted on the door goes down to terminal block uh, one and terminal 15 then jumps from ter to terminal block 2 to uh, terminal 24 and keeps working its way all the way down as you can see until it comes back into the hand selector switches and the relays and the contactors. That rough idea, you, you, you kind of get it in, on paper and, and an idea of what to do and then you bring it over and you take your time and you, and you draw this up. From those rough drawings, which probably took me hours to do, it took me about two hours to draw this out. So, not too bad. I'm going to take it to uh, Staples and uh, have a picture, or they've got big photocopy machines, and have them take it and uh, redo it. And then I'll have this as a master just in storage, and I'll also have a couple of sheets there if I want to make some changes. Best thing you can use when you want to make changes, right there, whiteout tape. You can see I made a mistake down here. You just put that across, and away you go. You don't have to wait for it to dry, and you can dry uh, right, right over top of it. What I'm going to do is... Um, We'll pause this now. I'll go out into the shop and we'll look at the uh, at the control panel, how I built it. And you, you'll start seeing some of these here, terminal block 2, number 25, and, and how it worked out. Just to give you an idea, okay? Okay, so you can see here our little label says TB2 up there, TB1. My variable frequency drive, because it's in the cabinet, I built a shroud that goes up. Um, the venting on the it draws in from the bottom convection plus plus it has a fan it blows up there and then on the outside I have this little vent right here so that works out really well if I'm using it in a manual mode instead of the heat building up in the case it's going to help force it back out so now we start looking at the terminal blocks and I'll just turn the camera a little bit so that'll make it a little bit easier and you can see the labels so what the wires will show is a designation okay um, on, on a connection wiring diagram. I forgot when I was downstairs to show you a connection wiring diagram. But for instance, you see these are the terminal block numbers and they're also telling you what's on there. And in this case, this happens to be the Z limits or the X limits and the Y limits and how they come in and those will all go back up to the breakout boards. Um, I've got spares put in here for relays and if you take a look on this here, there's the SoundLogic breakout board and it came with a little auxiliary board that's way up at the top here it's got four relays, and all I'm using on that out of the four relays is one for the EPO, for emergency stop string, one for the spindle, and one for the coolant. 
These electronic relays, I tried to use them for the contactor, but they failed in the on position. So they're there, but they're not being used. And we, what I did is I went back over to these ones, Allen Bradley contactors uh, for the power supply right here. And the other one for the variable frequency drive. And there's the geckos, again, all in, you can see how they're labeled, the Z, the Y, the X, everything's labeled. So you have an idea if you're going to troubleshoot and where you're going to go with. So I've got a little bit of, uh, of future development in here, the, the, the DR road board. Um, I'd like to put that in now that I've got everything worked out and in, in operating. And then I, when I use the machine in manual, because my one lead screw uh, or, or uh, ball screw is in metric, uh, the, the scales on the side of the machine here, like here, are no longer accurate because those are an imperial and I've got a metric ball screw. So if I just wanted to do a little quick something or other, that's going to not turn out the way I wanted to because it's not reading correctly. So I can use a computer without the drives uh, dithering and being held and I can uh, see, see the motion with the encoders which are, are mounted on the end of the uh, uh, motors. All right, well, I'm just going to go downstairs again where the prints are and just show you what the connection wiring diagram looked like, and we'll, and, uh, we'll wrap this up. Okay, back downstairs again. Just to give you an idea, this is, I think I've got about five sheets here. That's, that's the electrical wiring diagram. This here is the uh, layout of the terminal blocks in the mill control station on the milling machine. It gives a reference to uh, the TOS FN20 actual wiring diagrams. This is the uh, variable frequency drive. Again, this is a connection wiring diagram, so it's just showing you connection points. Um, this one here is for future development. It's showing the uh, sound logic and, and how to connect the sound logic board and the Rogers board for DRO. Well, I'm not to there yet, so that's documented but not happening yet that's my next level of development this one here completed and this is what we're looking at we're looking at uh, all the limits I'll turn the, the, the camera here and again like I said the X the Y the limits all the way down and how they connect this here was for the geckos and I only put one on here the others were typical so we have an idea how it works and um, we'll go one more sheet I think um, basic layout those were all the relays that I had showing the terminal connectors. So we know on relay number eight, for instance, the normally open contact goes to terminal block 239, and that would be TB2, uh, TB2 is down here, and it would be drawn in on the other on the other drawing. Actually, if you went over here, TB239, and it will show you, there you go, NO, and uh, or, or normally closed, there's 40, there's 39. So everything's all documented, labeled, and at least you can follow through and make some sense of it heads or tails. All right, well, that's a little brief overlook on blueprints and, and wiring diagrams. Thanks for watching.